Hi, this is Ruben Lerner and you're watching my Python Standard Library video explainer series. This time we are going to look at the template class in the string module. I'm going to first show you how it works and what we can do with it. And then I'll ask the question, do you really need this? Spoiler alert, probably not. Okay, so if I now say from string import template, and again, it's important to point out that this string here is not the string class. That's, of course, stir. Who would ever possibly confuse that with string? So strings are stir, and, and this string is a module. And in that module, we have a few other things that I've already discussed in this video explainer series, and one of them is the template class. So let's say I say here, um, you know, t equals a template. I'm going to say here, you know, welcome dollar name. You know, the price is dollar price. So I've now created a new template object. And I say, you know, what's the type of t? Well, it's a template. And if I just do a print t, well, it's going to print out, you know, this is its pretty representation, but that's not what you're supposed to do with it. What you're supposed to do is say t dot substitute. And then we're going to pass names and values. So I'm going to say your name equals Ruben and price equals 100. And now, as you can see, we get back a string from t.substitute based on the name value pairs that we have passed, name Ruben, price 100. What if I don't include one of them? Well, then I get a key error. And why a key error? Because it's basically taking them as a dictionary. Not even basically, whenever you have keyword arguments like this, they are included as a dictionary. And it says here key error price because it can't find it. Okay, so what are we supposed to do in that case? Well, one is we can just sort of try to check it carefully, but there's actually also another method we can use, and that is called t dot safe substitute. Say name equal Ruben. Watch what happens. Well, remember the price is dollar price. Now I want to look a little more closely at this syntax for the substitution variables there. So when I created my template, I used here welcome dollar name. The price is dollar price. Dollar and any combination, I believe it is, of letters, numbers, and underscore are considered to be a template variable there. So, and it was specifically designed to look like, uh, maybe not Perl, but sh the shell, tickle, those sorts of languages, which were pretty common back in the days when this was created. So you can say, welcome, dollar name, price is dollar price, right? And then we'll say t.substitute, right? And then name equals one and price equals two. You can pass in whatever you want. It's just going to run stir, let's say, to create a string based on whatever you pass. If you're not sure if you're going to be passing everything, then you probably use safe substitute. Now, it might sound weird that you might not know if you're passing things in, but of course, maybe you don't know exactly what template you're using, and maybe you're passing in a dictionary. If I say here, d equals name, you know, name colon, Ruben, right, and price, colon 100. So what I can do is I can say t.substitute, and I can't just say d. That won't work. Oh, actually, it did work. Uh -huh. What do you know? It's a little more clever than I thought. You can also, oh, that's right, because if you say here, help on t.substitute, now remember, you can actually pass it right against args and kw args, and it's kind of smart enough about doing that. There you go, and here I thought I was going to say t.substitute, double splat d, which will also work, but is more work, right, and looks a little crazier. So you can pass in, as we see now, a dictionary, and if you don't know if the dictionary is going to include everything, then you might want to use safe substitute. So if this is my dictionary here, and I do that, it's going to give me that key error. But if I say safe substitute instead, then we're fine. Now, as I said, dollar was chosen because it was like many, many other languages at the time. What if you don't like dollar for whatever reason? Well, you can actually then, like, like, for example, what if you use exclamation points? I'm not sure why you would want to do that, but you can, of course. So how are we going to do this? Well, I can say here, um, class my template inherits from template. And I can just say delimiter equals exclamation point. And then we'll say t equals a my template, and then it'll work just fine. Right, so what you can see is I can subclass template and then override some of its defaults. And what they say <clears throat> in the documentation is you can change the delimiter, you can change the ID pattern, what should be considered an identifier here. Right now it's set to be, well, as I said, basically letters, numbers, and underscores, more or less. Um, you also have, <clears throat> you also have uh, uh, braces if you really want them. So let me go back to the original version here, right? And if I want to, I can say dollar sign curly braces. And this is a little more familiar also for people who are used to the Unix shell. And it double checks that you're not going to uh, sort of compete or you're not going to have any sort of you know, problem between here and here. Like, for example, what if I were to say here E? Now it's very clear that it's going to be dollar 
curly braces name, that's going to be substituted with one, and then E right next door. But if I were to do it without the curly braces, then it would claim a key error saying, hey, that, you know, there's no such thing, name E. So that's basically how templates work. And this is really the question of where are you going to use them, why would you want to use them? And I would argue that in 2019, or whatever year you're watching this, you really don't want to use them anymore because you can use F strings. F strings are so much more powerful than these templates, which were great back in the day. This does raise the other question of why are they still in the standard library? And um, there have increasingly, as of this recording, been questions about why are a whole lot of things in the standard library, right? We like them, we might want to use them, there's a lot of legacy code that uses them. How much legacy code is there really that uses string.template? I'm not actually sure. Uh, I've honestly, uh, it's been years, I, I don't want to say I've never used it myself, but it's been many, many years since I used it, certainly since I started using str.format and f-strings, I have not. All right, so that is string.template, and next time we will talk about other things in the Python standard library. Thanks for watching.